we've had a request from James to show a hand tool and a power tool version of making a through wedged mortise and tenon joint. I've dug out a couple of pieces of wood from the scrap pile which I think will be great for an example and I've also laid out the tools which I think I'm going to be using. I've got a cross cut and a rip cut Japanese style saw, an engineer's tri-square, a pencil, a couple of chisels, a mortise gauge and a screwdriver to adjust it and a hammer and of course we're working at a woodworking bench. I'm just going to be demonstrating cutting the joint here today. If you want more details check out the video in my hand cut joints playlist. The first thing I want to do is lay out for the mortise and it's got to be a little bit shorter than the tenon component so I'll just mark that size as a reference. I've set my marking gauge to centre the mortise on the wood and I'll describe a couple of light lines between those two marks. Now I want shoulders all the way around the joint so I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch in this case at both ends. So this will be our mortise. Because we're doing the mortise right the way through I'm going to carry on those lines round to the other face. Then I can use the mortise gauge on the opposite side to mark the back side of the mortise. And I carry this a little bit longer because we're going to flare this side. There are loads of videos on chopping mortises so I won't take too much time over this one. Basically I start within my two end lines because I want to preserve those till the last minute and I just chop down with the bevel towards the middle of the mortise, the chisel held perpendicular in both planes, move back a bit, rock it forwards, rock it back, out comes a chip. Just continue along the line, turning the chisel around before you get to the end, keep repeating that down to depth. In this case we're going right the way through but I'm only going to chop about two thirds of the way through from this side then I'll turn the work over and complete it from the other side. Now I'll just work back carefully taking thin cuts until I get back to my marking line. So that's our square cut mortise completed. Now if we flip over to the reverse side, I think we know that when we put wedges in, we're going to drive out the tenon so that's going to need somewhere to go so we make the mortise a little bit wider on the back side and I like to go not quite as wide as the whole component so we mark those lines around for the full component and I'm going to split the difference between where the mortise is and where the full width of the component is Now I've got it wide enough, what I want to do now is slope the, the ends of the mortise so that they reach the squared mortise roughly three quarters of the way down. That's perhaps easiest if I mark some lines on. There's the square cut mortise. We want to meet it roughly about there. This is the width that I'm starting with. So that's the angle. 
And again, we'll take this in a, a couple of passes so that the chisel doesn't push the line backwards. And finally to our full width. And the same the other side. There really isn't too much to see. When it comes to marking the tenon, uh, I'd like to do the shoulders first. And because of the way the ends of the tenon flare out, we need to make the shoulder back a little bit further than the full width of the mortise. So we can stand them together and then just run a pencil a little bit higher and that'll be fine. I'll mark that round with a knife. Having knifed the shoulder line round, we then use the mortise gauge, just readjust the fence to put our tenon where we want it. I'm just going to do it in the middle on this one. Just remember to reference the fence off the same face every time. Now we just need to remove these two cheeks. for and cut the shoulders. I usually leave my knife lines and pair back to them with a couple of strokes with the chisel. And do a quick test for thickness. And that's lovely. I've marked the tenon to width, which I've taken off the mortise. And I've just marked a couple of points in here where I'm going to saw down to allow the wedge to go in. But I'd like, if I can, to prepare the wedges out of what's going to be the waste material on either side. So if I turn the mortise round to the flared side and line that up again, I now need to leave one saw kerf, which is going to be the cut down here, another saw kerf, which is going to be where the wedge is going in, and then I can mark for the top of the wedge, and the same this side, and square those across. The wedge needs to go down three quarters of the way through the mortise, and we can take that measurement off the mortise component as well. And square that across. So hopefully you can see that our wedges should now be cut. Two saw curves in from the bottom again. And up to there. Two saw curves in here. And up to there. I'll just repeat why there's two saw curves. The wedge needs to be an extra saw curve thick because it's going to go into a saw curve in the tenon. And the extra saw curve is where we're going to be cutting down the edge of this line for the width of the tenon. I've marked these all on my side, but just so you can see, this is where the, the curve's going to be for the wedge to be driven into. And over here as well. On which now we should be able to take our tenon and fit it directly into the mortise. Bottoms out, obviously on the bench, a little bit high because we made it that little bit longer. Let's check our wedges are at least as thick as the gap at the end, which they are. And they will get knocked home with some glue in like so. 
I just assembled it with glue inside the mortise, none on the tenon. Pushed it home nice and tight. Put some glue on the wedges, inserted them and, and pounded, those, pounded those home. I've got a little wedge here that I use, a flat-ended wedge, just to drive those wedges in nice and tight, like so. And it's currently just sitting there to dry. Of course, you can never be sure how good your joint is unless you take it apart. If you haven't seen Guy's power tool method, pop over and see that now. And don't forget to tune in in a few days time for our discussion on both the methods.